You landed on this video because you're wanting to improve your microphone quality, whether it be the equalizer or compressor or something like that. You know that you want your microphone to sound better, regardless of whether it's a budget microphone or an expensive microphone. In this video, we're gonna talk about how you can use Wavelink or even the process of using things like Wavelink to improve the sound of your microphone for your streams, for your content, etc. Whether you bought into a budget microphone system like the Fifine AM8, whether you have an XLRs connection, or if you have a more expensive microphone like the Shure SM7B, all of the principles we're going to talk about in this video apply to all of those. In this video, we're going to be showing all of this inside of Wavelink 3.0, a free software that Elgato has now made free for everyone to use. Yes, what used to be a software locked behind a product purchase is now free for you to use. I've made a whole video on it. You should totally go check it out and get the link to be able to go get that. By using the free plugins and everything that comes along with the Wavelink software, I'm going to show you how to improve the sound of your microphone for your streaming and content needs. So for this tutorial, we are doing this on Wavelink 3.0, their beta software, which is free for you to download. For Windows, they have support for Windows 11, not Windows 10. And for Mac, anything Sequoia or later. And we're actually doing this tutorial on Mac. Um, those of you who didn't know or didn't watch my other update, I actually switched to Mac full time as my main system. So uh, yeah, we're going to continue to see how this goes. We're doing like a year a year test, which sounds crazy. We're going to keep going. Once you've downloaded and installed it, we'll have to be able to connect your microphone up to Wavelink. Now I'm going to hide my camera and show you underneath this, you'll see create channel. If you have an Elgato device it will already be connected but if you don't you'll be able to see things at least on windows it'll say like aux and system and game on mac you're going to see programs as well as input devices find your microphone maybe it'll say fi fine if it's a fi fine mic and add it in i've already done that you can see it's the streamer x main i'm using the rode streamer x and this proves that it will actually work without an actual elgato device but we have this rode streamer x main and you can see once i click the little squiggly line here we'll see software effects we have no effects already added to this microphone you're currently hearing the sm7b raw through the streamer x now to get plugins you can click add effect and depending on what system you're on you might have things already installed for apple we have access to all of these that are already installed this is just stuff that comes with the apple ecosystem but you also see ones that are for elgato and these are the ones that we're going to go download and i'm going to show you if you're on windows and you want to have access to more plugins that maybe aren't elgato or you want a little bit more control there are these things called reaper plugins and i've done an entire video talking about how to adjust the eq as well as use other things from the Reaper plugins. I'll make sure to link that below. Anyway, let's go and get the Elgato plugins. To get to those plugins, you actually have to go to the marketplace. And once you click on the marketplace, you'll come here. Now, just as an FYI, you will have to sign in with an account. I think it's Twitch, Facebook, Google, whatever the case, just sign in with an account. And you'll have to do the same inside of Wavelink. Regardless, that's how you're actually going to get all of these effects into Wavelink. Uh, and these are all free. So what we're going to do is go over to audio effects at the very top beside Discover cover and then you'll see all the ones that are included at least on Mac because I'm on Mac you might see more because you're on Windows once we're here we're gonna grab three effects you're gonna see equalizer compressor and noise removal all you do is click install and as long as the accounts are linked or it'll prompt you on how to do all of that it'll download them directly into the software so you can use them all right so we're now in the software and I'm actually gonna turn on monitoring so that I can hear the adjustments and you're gonna hear the adjustments in real time as well so I'm actually listening to my microphone right now and we're going to go back into that panel by clicking the squiggly line and you can see add effect now the way we're going to do this is we're going to add it compressor first then we're going to adjust the eq then we'll do noise removal and we need to do it in a specific order because that's called a signal chain and the the sound will go through each one of those and be adjusted so if we switch them or do them in a different order you might have different impact on what your sound is going to be now down in the comments comment if you have a different signal chain and what your suggestions are this is just what i'm encouraging people to do number one we're going to start with a compressor and it has this really cool tutorial to kind of walk you through that but i want to explain it a little bit deeper so you understand what it is. You see a compressor takes the loudest part of your voice and the softest part of your voice and it mushes them together so that your louds aren't as loud and your softs aren't as soft so that you're kind of a consistent sound. It's kind of like on radio where you can always hear the singer even though they're really loud and screaming or they might be whispering. That's a compressor at work. Now when it does mush it together it needs to actually have makeup gain because it compressed the sound. So what we'll do is we'll move that whole range up called makeup gain. 
the, let me show you how. Now the software makes it really simple, okay? So what we're gonna do is hit proceed. Vocal compression is the secret to sounding pro. Let's do this. Anyway, so it pops the, this thing, it shows you this, it says proceed, and then you drag this down to basically knock off the tops of your loudest piece, because you're trying to equalize and level everything out here to compress it, okay? So we're just gonna drag it, let's just say right here, We'll say finalize, and if I get really loud, you can see the, the gray in the background is the uncompressed, and you can see what it's making the adjustment to to kind of pull it down, and you can see gain reduction to understand what's happening. Now I'm gonna pop over into OBS because I want you to look at the, the audio mixer. Audio input capture is actually the wavelength source. And what I want you to see is right now I'm hovering around negative 10, negative 12, and that's where I wanna be. Inside the compressor, there's a little settings button, and in here you'll see auto makeup. If you turn this off, it'll actually have you at zero decibels. And if I go back over into OBS, you can see it's got me around negative 15. Now, with it being auto, if you're getting really loud or not soft or your microphone gets brighter or, or soft or whatever the case, it will automatically adjust it. Personally, I don't like that, and I want to be able to make sure it's where it needs to be. I don't adjust my microphone volume. Once everything's set, it's set. So what you can see is right now I'm averaging around negative 16, negative 15 because it's compressed. I'm going to add, let's say, 5 dB back. And you can see right here, I'm around the same space I was before, but it's gonna be consistent. It's not gonna go above or below that extra five decibels that I've added. Now, EQ can be daunting, but we're gonna explain it really simply. And if it even feels more daunting, there are presets you can download and install. So on Wavelink, you can actually see Epos Vox and Harris also have just like basic EQs that they've included. Uh, Epos actually has some specifically for different microphones, especially the Elgato mics. But but Elgato also has one here as well. So you can download these and get started with kind of a baseline. Personally, I want you to learn how to tune the mic for your own voice because everyone's voice is unique. These are starters for a reason. And that's why I like even Harris says starter EQ. He even has a video on how to tweak it. I think this is what's really important. Anyway, let's get started. I'm gonna show you the basics of adjusting your mic. All right, so let's explain each little thing so you understand. On the left-hand side, this pink dot right here, is what's called a high pass. Now this is gonna pull off the things that they call rumble or sub bass, but this would be like rumbles from like your air conditioning system or like maybe bounces and stuff on your desk. Or if you have your computer on the desk and it has like vibrations because of the fans, it's gonna pull those out. This is very typical that you roll off about 80 Hertz. Uh, and so this is something you would wanna do. Again, this is called a high pass. The next thing we're gonna do is grab this orange one. We're gonna go somewhere around 200 and we're gonna go up about three dB. And this is what's subjective. I have a deeper voice, so this works around for me. Depending on where your voice sits, you'll need to adjust it. And so what you can do is just adjust it, move it up and down, and you can see what we're trying to do is add a little bit more of that body into the bottom part of our range, that bassy sound. And so the higher you go, the more decibel you add. I wouldn't add too much. Start out with two, three dB and go from there. The next one we're gonna add by just double clicking is gonna add a dot. We're gonna go around 500, around, do you hear that, around? We're gonna go around 500 and we're going to go down. We're only gonna get down a couple and this is gonna remove what they call as the boxy part of the voice. I like for you to think of it more about like that telephone effect. So if I take this and bring this up, You'll see that this is that telephone, hello, 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 how's it going? That telephone part of the voice. I wanna pull that out and it's gonna give us more rounded sound. Now it also depends on your microphone because some mics like the AM8 come tuned out of the box. So depending on what your mic is, you'll have to make the adjustments that work for you. The next one we're gonna add, we're gonna double click and then we're gonna right click it to change it to one of the other options. Actually gonna make it a high shelf. And what that does is it allows me to raise everything above, and I'm gonna make it around a thousand. We're only gonna go up maybe a decibel. And for this microphone specifically, this is the Shure SM7B in my voice. I like what this does to my voice. And then this last one is called the low pass, and it just kind of cuts off all the stuff on the top. We're gonna go around 15, 16, 17K. Depending on your mic, like this one does 20K capture. This only does 16 or 15K. So 
your microphone might not even capture those frequencies. So adjust it accordingly and move, you know, change things, see how things work to make your microphone sound the best for your voice. And the best way to do that is to come back and turn all of your adjustments off and go to the pre part. This is before any of the adjustments. This is with the compressor added so that I can be really loud or I can be really soft and you can still hear those things. And then adding the EQ to uh, add a little bit more color to the voice. Last for the effects is actually the noise removal. And I wanted to cover this one because out of box, I don't like it because their settings keep it at 85% of a threshold, which means it's gonna cut out a bunch of the sound and sounds unnatural sometimes. So what I want you to do is if you're going to use this, lower it down, start having some of the sounds in your room, like there's talking or your keys on your keyboard, whatever the case, make sure you make some sounds and then figure out what's the best range for this. I personally think 50% is a great place. You still get the background sound. So your microphone doesn't sound artificial but those other sounds are removed. And I would encourage you to kind of play with this for a little bit. The release is also really important, so it doesn't sound so robotic. So you could increase this a little bit and it allows it to kind of taper off a little bit more at the end, so it doesn't feel unnatural. And this is after all of the adjustments. And you tell me down in the comments, what do you think about the sound and these adjustments? You can see it was really easy to add those. This is with Wavelink 3.0, but if you wanna make those adjustments inside your streaming platform, OBS, Meld, Streamlabs, whatever the case, you can totally do that. And I have a video talking about the basic principles with their plugins and effects that are in those programs. Uh, you can check out that video. I think it's right here. And you can check out one that's really important where I talk about compressors and a really cool thing called sidechain compressor where when you speak the volume lowers of your other sources kind of like if you want your game to be loud but then when you speak it kind of lowers and then automatically goes back up yeah it's free yeah it's in your obs you totally could use it thank you for watching check out one of those two videos and we'll see you in the next one